Hi, this is Dave Osborne from Clam Corporation. Today, I am making my prime rib, secret prime rib recipe that I do all year long. It's super fantastic. I, right now, in appreciation for all the employees at Clam, we're gonna do a Christmas luncheon, and everybody's super amped because many of these people have not had this, uh, this recipe, but a few have, and they think it's super fantastic, so they're very excited. So I'm gonna show you how I do it and how it's done, and so you can do it at home and just love it. Here we go. So I don't know if you've ever gone to the grocery store or the butcher shop, but sometimes you'll see this behemoth piece of meat. This is a prime rib roast. This is what I like to use. I like to use a prime prime, so it's not a choice cut, it's a prime cut. And so it is a boneless, a lot of times you have a bone in on these bad boys, but I would have the butcher cut the bone off if you do have a bone in, and then you can retie it on because uh, through this process, I'll just show you how to do this and season it up on both sides. The secret to making this particular recipe is you have to season it and you have to let it set up for two days prior to cooking. That way it absorbs all these flavors. So here, I'm gonna run through this real fast and I'm gonna show you how I do it. What we're gonna do first, I'm gonna open this bad boy up. I'm gonna stuff it with these, with a peeled uh, garlic bulb. After that, I'm gonna season up with a little onion powder, garlic powder, and I'm gonna coat that whole thing up. I'm gonna put some olive oil on it, coat it with olive oil, and then I'm going to chop, finely chop up these particular herbs, rosemary, uh, oregano, I have sage and I have thyme and I'm gonna use my little secret chopper here to do it and uh, I'll just show you how it's done and, and you guys can give it a go. It's super fantastic. It would be the best prime rib you've ever had in your life if you, if you follow this recipe. So here we go. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this bag up over the sink because you don't wanna open it up on your countertop because it makes usually a bloody mess and that's something else you have to clean up and I don't want to mess with things like that. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is open it up over on the sink here and we'll get going. Now that I removed the wrapper, uh, we are going to cut some slits into the prime rib here and I'm going to stuff it with some uh, garlic bulbs, but they're going to be sliced. You'll see how I do it. So this is about a 16 pound prime rib. This would probably serve, oh, if you have real big eaters, 20 plus people. Um, so it, it, it's, it's a pretty big piece of meat. So I'm gonna cut slits in it. Usually do three slits. I use this little knife, it's just handy for me. You, you, know, you can use any knife you want. You can use a steak knife if you want. Plus it's something unusual for me um, doing, uh, using a cutting board. Anybody who knows me or have watched my uh, previous cooking uh, shows, I like paper plates. That's my ultimate cutting board and everybody gives me grief about it, but that's what I just enjoy using as a paper plate. I don't know why. So I cut these, these slits in here um, and we're gonna stuff them after I get all these slits cut in here. And then after we do this, I'm gonna do the other side exactly the same. Uh, I suppose these are probably about two inches apart. You just wanna get a nice flavor of garlic in there. And by the way, once you stuff it and let it set for two days, it, it's not gonna taste garlicky. It's gonna have a nice flavor, and we're gonna, we're gonna do this bad boy on the Traeger grill. And the Traeger grill is, uh, you're gonna smoke it, and it's really a nice setup. So um, I'm gonna do these slits, and we are gonna get going on the garlic. Guys can smash garlic. I don't like smashing garlic. Uh, you, you lose a lot of the oil, a lot of flavor out of it. So I just take one section here. We're gonna use probably about eight or 10 of these sections. And I'm just gonna chop the top, nip the tail. And then you can usually just peel it. I and mean, it's like peeling an, peeling an orange or uh, an onion or something like that. A lot of times you have to use your little knife here. That's why I like this little knife. So what I do is I just take this little bulb and I just slice it. I just cut little slices on it like that and I just take these and I stick it right in these holes that I punched in there. 
And you just do that on both sides, front and back, and you don't lose a bunch of flavor or anything like that. All the juices don't run out of it. That's, that's crazy, it doesn't do that. Plus these things are super fatty, that's the way they come. That's what makes them super delicious is because there's so much marbling on these, especially the prime cuts are so, are so well marbled that it uh, makes it really terrific. Plus the leftovers are fantastic. If you ever want to make one of these or try it, um, boy, we make uh, French dip sandwiches uh, after with the leftovers, that's what we've always done and it's super delicious. But rarely do you have much left over. Unfortunately, people really like this and this is a great thing to make for any time of the year. I make them in the summer, I make them you know, all year long. And This is actually my sister's recipe, uh, part of it. She named the recipe Happy Birthday to Me, which I thought was so funny. Once again, nothing perfect about stuffing this. Just shove them in that hole. Okay, we've got this bad boy nearly all stuffed up. I'm just doing the last couple. And then we're gonna repeat this step on the other side. So what we just did here, do this exact same step on the other side. They don't have to be perfect. You're just trying to get the flavor of that garlic into the prime rib. And um, we're just repeating this on the other side. So I'm gonna flip this bad boy over. This is called the fat side, if you're wondering, because it looks fatty. You don't have to trim this unless there's excess of fat. Typically, uh, I just leave them the way they are because a lot of this fat renders off as you smoke it and cook it. So uh, I'm gonna cut them slits in this one, and we're just gonna do what we just did on the other side. It's usually about one bulb per prime rib. So if you're doing multiple prime ribs, uh, you're gonna need more than one bulb of garlic. Also, something handy if you find them in the store, I don't like the jar garlic, but I do like the garlic that is already peeled in little plastic individual bags. That's super handy and save you a little bit of time on messing with garlic and getting garlic fingers, if you will, uh, because the smell, just the oils just stick to your skin and you, uh, you have, the, you have a, a garlic smell with you for a while. Okay, we got both sides stuffed. She's ready to go. So the next step here is to put olive oil on this bad boy. So I'm gonna push this forward a little bit here and I'm gonna get a pan. And I'm gonna put it in this pan here because otherwise you leave yourself a gigantic mess and I'm not big on messes. So from now on, this is gonna stay in this tin foil pan. So one thing about olive oil, do not, if you do make this recipe, do not re-olive oil it after it's on the grill. And don't pour any excess goodness that spills out here from the bottom of this pan. Don't attempt to pour it on the prime rib when you put it on at 500 on your grill. And I'll go over that a little later on. But because what will happen is olive oil is very flammable and you'll have yourself a fire mess and you don't, want to, you don't want to do that. So I have it olive oil, this perfect. Uh, first thing I'm gonna put on is granulated onion. This is, and you, you literally cannot over season this thing. Um, it's a big piece of meat. You want a lot of flavor to go into the meat and so you cannot over season it. You could probably over salt it, but you could never over season it. So this was my uh, granulated onion. This is my granulated garlic that I put on here. And I make this the same every time. This is this exact recipe I make over and over and over. Look at the other side, I don't want to pour this out. This is black pepper here, just fine, old, fine black pepper. Okay, now that we have this done, the next thing we're gonna do is use our fresh herbs that I bought. And our fresh herbs are sage, thyme, a, a rosemary, and oregano. And I'm gonna take my fresh spices that I have here, and I'm gonna grind them up in my little coffee grinder. 
Uh, this is a fancy way of doing it. If you don't want to use fresh spices, you can just buy the dried spices in your favorite grocery store. But I like to use fresh because I think it gives a better flavor. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take the, this, grind it up in the grinder, and uh, we're going to apply it to the prime rib. So here we go. And just an FYI, I'm going to mix all these spices together. It's not going to be separate. It's going to be all mixed together in one potpourri of spices, if you will. So it's all, all together. And this is sage. There's no rhyme or reason why I, I chose sage first. It's just it was closest to me, so I used that one. And you're going to do this process for each one of these. And uh, like I said, it just really gives it a nice flavor. Sometimes uh, you might have some dark spots um, on the on the spices. Yeah, don't use the dark ones. If they if they don't look green and leafy and nice, just just toss them. It's it's not that crucial. You don't want the stems. Just just take the leaves. I mean, some stems are okay, but you're mainly, you want the leaf. Okay, guys, we're ready to apply the spices and. Uh, here we go, after this, we're gonna put kosher salt on it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just make sure you're mixed up a little bit here. And uh, we're just gonna put it over the prime rib. I know it. Gr green on prime rib just doesn't look very appealing, but trust me, it's worth every little bit of work you put into this thing. It is absolutely worth it, so. I'm gonna pour some of this in here. Make sure I get all the goodness on there. I'm gonna do that. Looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna take my kosher salt and I'm gonna coat it. Now remember, you're doing this two days in advance. So if you cook it real soon, like right after you did this, you won't get anywhere near the effect that you need as far as the flavor goes. So, um, so now I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing I just did on the other side. Okay, I'm flipping. Also, some of you guys at home might be saying, hey Dave, why aren't you seasoning the ends? Well, the ends, you can season them, but the ends are kind of a bummer because you have to stand it up on end and get to it, so I'll just try and slide some of the spices down here on the edge of the pan to get on the ends, but the ends I really don't focus in on. So here, once again, we're gonna repeat what we just did on the other side, and that is we start, well here, I better put a little olive oil on it. Once again, do not be tempted to use this leftover olive oil on the prime rib. When you put it on your grill at 500, you will have a fire, and then you'll be sending me nasty notes. Um, okay, first thing I'm going to put on is granulated garlic again. Once again, granulated onion. So that's that, and then we're going to put on our pepper. Ta-da! Now it's ready for spices. Okay guys, we have the spices. We are going to put them, mix them up a little bit here. And then we're going to just put them right on this beautiful prime rib. Hey, I have to give a special plug to Von Hansen Meats. Von Hansen is one of my favorite local butchers, and those guys hooked me up with an amazing, five amazing prime ribs. And uh, that's what I'm making for the, the clam team today uh, for lunch. That's what they wanted. It's our Christmas lunch. So thank you, Von Hansen's, for hooking me up. Okay, I got that all done up with all the spices. I'm going to kosher salt it, and then when I'm done kosher salting it, I am going to cover it up with a piece of tin foil and put it in the fridge for how many days? Two days. You can do it one day, but I think you get better results with two days, so today we're going two days, and uh, it'll be super terrific. So, tin foil. And then the fun begins. I have to do two pieces of tin foil. Mm -hmm. 
boom, ready. We are gonna put her in the fridge for how many days? Two days. Clear the shelf. Okay guys, it's been two days later. We just got it out of the fridge. Um, we are going to put this on the grill at 500 degrees for three minutes, and then we're gonna turn it down to 180, and we are gonna let her go for about five hours or so. Very important device you need when you make one of these is an instant thermometer and make sure if you want to have a perfect prime rib, it has to be between 125 and 132. That's a medium rare prime rib. I always use my trusty thermometer. That is one thing, it's a must have. The other two things, a must have if you're going to have prime rib, if you're going to do it right, go to your favorite grocery store or butcher shop. This is a au jus prep. It makes about two gallons of au jus. You don't need anything like that. You probably need maybe a cup for a, a primer of this large. This one's about a 16 pounder to remind you. So you need the au jus prep or au jus to make this. It takes just a few minutes to make. You just add water and it's, you're golden. And the other thing here is horseradish. Everybody likes a little horseradish. This is extra hot and uh, guys really like it. So we're gonna go back to the grill, back to the Traeger, and we're gonna put it on at 500 for three minutes and then we're gonna turn it down to 180 for about five hours. And like I said, this is about a 16 pound prime rib. So it should serve at least 20 people. So off to the grill we go. Okay, I see the mighty Traeger is up to the temperature that we want, which is 500. So we are going to put her on for three minutes. So here we go. She's smoking. Three minutes. Okay, it's been three minutes, guys. And now I'm gonna turn this down to 180. Do not open up the grill unless you suspect a fire. Uh, but I can tell there's no fire. So I'm gonna turn this down. To, one, to 180, and we're gonna be good to go. So, right there, there you go. So let her go for about five hours at 180, but check it, and I would flip it one time at approximately the halfway mark, which would be, oh, two and a half to three hours into it. Flip it, and then after four hours, I would check the internal temp. Just make sure, do not overcook this prime rib because it's a disaster. You don't want to do that. So 180, she'll cool down and we're good to go. <laughs> okay guys, we're getting close. We sh it should be about 125, 135. We're going to see where we're at here. That's perfect, 130 is right there is where I really like it. So we're gonna pull it um, and then we're gonna cut them up. So uh, we'll see how this goes using the handy dandy grill mitts. The reason why I like grill mitts is because you can't really pick it up with a fork, you know, it's just too heavy. It's a, it's a behemoth piece of meat, so There she goes. Let's cut it up. Okay guys, this is the final product. We'll see if all this hard work was worth it. Um, this took about five hours to do. And uh, this, is, this is the truth or dare. So we're gonna see what we have here. And I'm gonna, I always like to cut in the middle first just to make sure that it's exactly the way I want it. But my meat thermometer already told me it's the way I want it. So here, I'll show you guys before I get to look at it. That looks fantastic. That's absolutely perfect. That's how you want it. Serve it always medium rare if you can. If you have people who like it on medium, 
you can heat it up on a stove, you can put it back on the grill, but I always like it medium rare. And this is absolutely perfect. I think the team will enjoy eating it and I hope you do too at home. Give it a go, let me know how it turns out and uh, thanks for watching.